I'm not. Uh, today I wanted to talk about The House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz. This is a Holmes novel. It was the first sanctioned Holmes novel by Arthur Conan Doyle's estate, and it was written by Anthony Horowitz and published in 2011. Um, this book starts out as um, we encounter Watson. He is old. Holmes is dead. Mary's dead. Um, presumably ever all the other main characters in the Sherlock Holmes world um, have passed away. And Watson is in a nursing home. And he is at the end of his life. And he's deciding to write down some of the stories that he wasn't previously able to write down um, of his adventures with Sherlock Holmes. If you don't know Sherlock Holmes, uh, this might not make a lot of sense, but he is the world's greatest detective. But he's a consulting detective and he kind of has his own agenda for things as well. And then Watson is his faithful friend and companion who is a doctor and they go on adventures together and solve mysteries and ideally make the world a better place. So this is a little bit in the present of him being an elderly gentleman remembering his past and writing down these stories and a little bit in the past with this story of the House of Silk. It goes through very much like a home story. There's a little bit of like a an opening and there's a mystery that Holmes has to solve and then that mystery kind of is more than meets the eye, is more than they expected. So I really like this book. I think that it's obvious that Anthony Horowitz was trying very hard to write in the style of Arthur Conan Doyle and it's clear that he achieved that. He, some of these passages could be straight out of a Holmes novel. I haven't read the Holmes novels for a little while, but I've read them over and over and I've listened to them. And I'm definitely familiar with the writing and this struck me as being very, very Arthur Conan Doyle, which was really cool and interesting. Um, I also thought that, you know, the pacing of the story and the pacing of the book was trying to emulate Arthur Conan Doyle. I thought that twists and turns that it takes was trying to be very Arthur Conan Doyle and I like that I thought it was great I'm interested to read more he has one more book um about Sherlock Holmes and technically I think it's about um Moriarty actually I definitely would pick that up and I would also pick up some of Anthony Horowitz's other books because that I'd be interested to see what Anthony Horowitz's style actually is but I had some issues with the things that were not like Sherlock Holmes one I didn't really like seeing Watson old and him being super depressed in the beginning and him like kind of at the end of his life. I just didn't enjoy that part. I didn't think it was not Holmesian, um, but I didn't really like those were my least favorite parts. And any time that he kind of interrupted the story with the current day, I was really pulled out of it. And then I also thought that Anthony Horowitz really um, like humanized Holmes a lot more than Conan Doyle ever did. I think he tried to make him very much the way you feel about Sherlock Holmes. So like you always feel like Watson and Holmes are best friends. You always feel like they have this connection and that Holmes isn't completely one-sided only taking from Watson. You feel like Watson's getting something back as well. But if you read the books, it, that's not necessarily always the case. I mean, occasionally Holmes will say something nice about Watson or occasionally there will be like that kind of um, actual expression there, but mostly Holmes is very self-centered and rude and much more like the Sherlock um, kind of in the uh, Netflix version, BBC version, than in um, this book where he was much more like genuine and personable and a person and kind to Watson and other people. He tends to be more of a jerk to people than to be kind to them. Although Holmes has a lot of deep feelings and he loves those people, he has real issues making connections with them. The boys that he employs from the street, of course he has, he cares about them and, um, you know, he cares about Wiggins, but in this book, his guilt at using them is so obvious and tortures him so much and is so spoken about that it's unusual for Holmes. He might feel those ways and you might get that impression, but he wouldn't say, I feel guilty, it's my fault. That was uh, also took me out of the story a little bit because I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, Holmes wouldn't, like, 
be so nice to Watson. Like, he wouldn't be so caring outwardly. He would care, but he wouldn't be so caring outwardly. And then the last thing that really bothered me about this story was the subject matter to which the whole kind of mystery accumulates is is not subject matter that I think Arthur Conan Doyle would have tackled. And obviously it's a different time. This was written, you know, only nine years ago. But this particular subject matter I felt was far too modern and a lot of aspects of the mystery were far too modern. And I like the idea of bringing Holmes into the modern day. I like Sherlock, I like elementary, I like those stories and having Holmes deal with those modern subject matters and those modern problems that I don't think that, you know, a traditional Sherlock Holmes novel would have had. And the thing is, if this were a modern Sherlock Holmes novel and it wasn't trying so hard to emulate Conan Doyle's style and so hard to be the same as the older Sherlock Holmes novels, if this weren't trying so hard to be just like a Sherlock Holmes novels, I might have been able to buy those modern elements, but they really took me out of the story in this because I'm reading this as if I were reading Conan Doyle, as if I were reading The Hound of the Baskervilles. I'm reading this as if it was actually a Sherlock Holmes novel, which it did really well in some aspects, but then to have those modern elements to it, that really took me out of it. So I think that those two things really like clashed and were really like um, took away from each other. Like I think if it had gone all modern that would have been better or if it had gone all old that would have been better. But because they were trying to fit those two things in it just didn't feel like it fit together. The ending where it's kind of revealed what the problem has been the whole time and why these events occurred was so modern and startling that like I it really like kind of like flubbed the end of the book for me. Like whereas I was totally invested in it, albeit without the older Watson parts, then I became very like kind of disinvested because it was like too icky, you know, too icky. I think I can definitely call this a um, spoiler-free review. If you like Sherlock Holmes, 100% pick this up. I think it was a great take on Sherlock Holmes. I think it was a great homage to Arthur Conan Doyle and to Sherlock Holmes, but know that it has some very modern elements, but I'm super glad that I read this. I hope that if you're interested in this book, you check it out, and I hope that if you read this book, you let me know. If you've read this book before, please comment down below, tell me what you thought, add your own review, spoiler free, and I hope you enjoyed this book review. I hope to do more of these. I definitely prefer a spoiler free book book review. This is much more an opinionated review than a, um, I mean, this is a subjective review, not an objective review. I'll try to do more of these in the future and we'll see what happens. I have a couple of more standalone reviews that I'm interested in doing, but thanks so much for watching my standalone spoiler-free review of The House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz, a Sherlock Holmes story. All right, thanks so much. Bye! Hi, it's Mo, again. I finished my first book review of A House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz, my first standalone book review for Booktube, and it occurred to me that I have two copies of this book. I don't know where I got either copy. I'm going to keep the hardcover copy. I read the softback, but um, it's nice. It's like pretty floppy. I thought it would be fun to do a little giveaway for the paperback. So it's just, um, you know, a, a pretty standard uh, trade size paperback. It's definitely a little bit beat up. It has like a little chip on the corner there. I, um, I'm a dog ear -er, so there might be some dog ears in here, although I don't actually see any. But if you wanted to read this book and you wanted to get it for free, I would suggest entering this giveaway. This giveaway is going to be open to anyone in the United States only at this time. This is going to be my first giveaway, so I'm going to keep it a little bit small. You will need to be subscribed to my YouTube channel and you will need to leave a comment on this video to enter. I'll be contacting the winner through YouTube, so make sure that, that you are subscribed and have left a comment so that I can reach out to you. One week from whenever this video goes up, I will choose a winner and I will contact you one week after this video goes up. I thought this would be a fun idea. Uh, we'll see if it works out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Well, whatever. Anyway, okay.